Let's start with the scary and slowly work our way towards the most horrific traps on the list. Number nine, the exploding motorcycle. During the Vietnam War, motorcycles were strategically placed in cities and villages that were predicted to be invaded by US soldiers. The motorcycles were carefully rigged with explosives, and once a person got on top of the bike to ride it, it would ignite the trap, causing severe damage or even death. Now, I can't imagine that this tactic worked for very long, as there are only a few sources online that even mention it. Either way, I'm sure that they figured out that stealing and riding a bicycle was probably the better choice. While we're on the subject of rigged explosions, I might as well cover rigged trophies. The Viet Cong and Northern Vietnamese Army quickly discovered that American soldiers loved to show off. When US soldiers took over an enemy base, one of the few things that were worth of any value to them was the enemy's flags. The salty communist army began to rig their flags with explosives, causing them to explode once they were picked up. But it didn't stop there. They would basically rig any item that they thought a US soldier would be interested in. Now thankfully, the communist army weren't bright enough to rig boxes of pizza and the Beatles records, as the US would have surely lost the war. Number 8. The Rubber Band Grenade The rubber band grenade was a deadly jump scare that was used by both the Viet Cong and Northern Vietnamese Army. This booby trap was easy to make and was also very effective. They would simply take a hand grenade, pull the pin out, hold the lever down, and place some rubber bands on the lever to keep it compressed. They would then hide the grenade in their huts, like an easter egg. This was done since they knew that US soldiers regularly burned their huts down, preventing them from returning. But for US soldiers, this practice would soon come with a massive risk, since huts were booby trapped with these hidden grenades. And once the hut was set ablaze, the rubber band would begin to melt, causing the lever to spring open, igniting the grenade and exploding, sending deadly shrapnel flying in all directions, up to a radius of 35 meters. Now, a similar tactic that is used today is the mason jar grenade, where a grenade has the safety pin removed, then placed inside of a glass jar, with the lever held down by the wall of the jar. It is then dropped from a drone, causing the glass to shatter and the grenade to explode shortly after. Now, thankfully, nowadays this operation is performed by a carefully selected professional, which, of course, are all retired Call of Duty players since they have years of experience performing under extreme pressure and handling an Xbox controller. Number 7. Foot Traps There were a few types of foot traps that were used during the Vietnam War, all which were very painful and could potentially turn deadly, since these traps used nails and stakes that would typically have the razor-sharp tips covered in poison or venom. But if neither of those could be found nearby, poop and urine would be the next best option. One of the most common foot traps consisted of a set of 2x4s that had long nails on one end. And when a soldier would step on the center of the boards, they would swing open, causing the side with the nails to tightly clamp down on the person's leg. Now another popular method was to simply dig a hole, place some stakes inside of it, get the poop guy to cover the tips, and then covering it with a thin mat and some foliage. When a soldier stepped on the booby trap, they would simply fall through the mat and puncture their foot, which has to be one of the most annoying and disgusting traps, since you were left to suffer with the agonizing pain of a wet sock. Now, sometimes the spikes were even set up pointing downwards, so when a soldier's foot went through the mat, they would instinctually pull their leg up to avoid the trap, latching themselves onto the downward spikes. Eventually, the communist army began to see just how effective these traps were, so, they began placing grenades inside of them as well. Number 6. The Cartridge Trap Another foot trap that was heavily used during the Vietnam War was the Cartridge Trap, a very simple to make booby trap that consisted of a wooden board, a nail, a piece of bamboo, and a 50 caliber cartridge. It was then placed underground and covered with a thin mat and some foliage. Now, as terrifying as this trap was, it at least got a cute little name, the Toe Popper which actually makes it sound kind of pleasant. This trap was strategically placed on walking trails or in areas where US soldiers were predicted to pass through. And when a soldier stepped on the booby trap, it would press the cartridge down onto the nail, causing it to fire the round of ammunition into the soldier's foot, sending all the little piggies to the market. Not only did this trap heavily damage a soldier's foot, but it also served as an alarm inherently turning this trap into an easy ambush. Number 5. Punji Stick Traps 
This next trap is something straight out of an Indiana Jones film. The spiked pits were a terrifying booby trap that were generously placed throughout the dense jungle of Vietnam. This would fall under punji stick traps and is very similar to the foot traps we covered in the number 7 spot. Except a lot more gruesome, deadly, and terrifying. Instead of setting up razor sharp stakes to impel the foot, they were now designed much larger and made to puncture the entire human body. Another common tactic used by the communist army was planting punji sticks in high grass. They would set these up at choke points where they could ambush US soldiers and their allies. You see, when a soldier began to take fire from an unknown location, they will instinctually die for cover in the tall grass and impelling themselves on the hidden stakes. Number 4. The Snake Pit Now, as if the spiked pits were not terrifying enough. The Viet Cong and Northern Vietnamese Army would take it too far, when they began to add deadly vipers inside of the pits as well. Which, we can all agree, is cheating. The Communist Army would also begin to conserve the stakes, digging deep holes and just filling them with the deadly snakes. One of the most common snakes that were used was the yellow-bellied bamboo pit viper, but US soldiers would know it by a different name, the two-stepper implying that after receiving a bite, you would only take two steps before dropping dead. Now, that's a bit of an exaggeration, but nonetheless, the snake was definitely lethal. The communist army mixed and matched all of their traps and were willing to try just about anything to see what would work. Holes with stakes. Holes with snakes. Holes with grenades. No holes. Just poop on stakes. Holes with poop stakes and snakes. Snakes with stakes. You get the point. Number 3. Trip Wires One of the most terrifying and paranoia inducing traps involved the use of trip wires. There were many traps that used the trip wire method, but I'll just cover the most common ones, starting with the can grenade. The can grenade consisted of a grenade, a can, and a piece of wire. The grenade would have the safety pin removed from it and placed inside of a can, with the can wall holding down the lever. A piece of wire was then tied to a base, then to the grenade, creating a trip wire. And when a soldier would hit the wire, the grenade would be pulled out of the can, releasing the lever and igniting the grenade. Now these trip wires were also commonly hooked up to crossbows, which of course shot arrows that had the tips covered in feces. Another tripwire trap that struck fear into the hearts of soldiers was the mace. This was a large, heavy swinging ball that had wooden or metal spikes sticking out of it, which would swing down from overhead and slamming into the person who hit the wire. But wait, there's more. There was also the bamboo whip. This was a bamboo stick that had one foot spikes sticking out of it. The stick would be pulled back between trees and held with tremendous tension, tied with a simple catch that would release when someone hit the trip wire, which would send the spike bamboo flying directly at the person. There was also another trap called the raft. This was a large, heavy wooden block that had razor sharp spikes sticking out of it. And when the wire was hit, the wooden block would fall from out of the trees and impelling the soldier's head. Number 2. Landmines Landmines had to have been the single most terrifying traps that were used during the Vietnam War. To put into perspective just how deadly and fear inducing they were, we just have to take a look at one statistic. It's estimated that a third of all marine casualties were caused by mines and explosive booby traps. Now just imagine the levels of paranoia you would have with every single step. You hit a twig, you drop and roll. You hit a pothole, you drop and roll. You hit a weed. You begin to question what you're even doing in the jungles of Vietnam and slowly come to the realization that war is nothing more than a racket where a handful of wealthy people get even more rich as they trade human lives for insane profits. But of course, all your boys will tell you to just take a deep breath, drink some water, and sleep it off. Now, one of the most common landmines that the communist army used was the DH-10 directional fragmentation mine, which was over a foot in length and weighed over 30 pounds. The DH-10 unleashed fragments up to 200 meters and was commonly rigged with trip wire. As for the unlucky soldier that hit this wire, well, I'm not so sure just how much of him would be left. But one thing I am sure of 
is anyone that witnessed this trap in action would never be the same after seeing it. Number one, the rat tunnels. The rat tunnels were easily the most terrifying traps the Viet Cong ever created. This was not just a trap. This was more of a horror movie. You see, the rat tunnels were an extensive and complex network of underground tunnels that served many purposes. They were also so small that once inside, it would be impossible to turn back around and made clearing them out a solo mission. For the communist army, these tunnels housed their rest area, kitchen, ammunition, water, and first aid stations. But for the US and its allies, these tunnels were nothing short of a horrific nightmare. You see, the tunnels were pitch black, requiring you to hold a flashlight and only allowing for a pistol in your other hand. As you begin to slowly crawl through the tunnel, bats will be flying past your head and rats and bugs running and crawling past you. But soon, you inevitably come to a junction where you could continue going straight, make a left, or a right. You might not know it at the time, but a wrong turn here could be the last choice you ever make. As there are many false tunnels, tunnels that lead to landmines, spiked pits, ambushes, and even areas where vipers are tied to the walls. Now you're probably asking yourself, what soldier in their right mind would ever volunteer to go inside one of these hellish holes? It turns out not many. Instead, the platoon just became what it was fighting against. Communist. Sending in the shortest soldier in the platoon, giving him a job that he never wanted. Now, don't get me wrong, the US and its allies did eventually put together a very small group of soldiers that would specialize in clearing out these tunnels. And when I say small, I mean that literally and figuratively, as most of them were under 5 foot 5. This small group of soldiers would come to be known as the Tunnel Rats, and throughout the Vietnam War, they proved to be some of the bravest soldiers to have ever fought, earning their respect and admiration from their fellow soldiers. And for once in their lives, they were not the ones looking up to others. Mm -hmm. 